This is the map that pilots check to see if there's going to be any high altitude turbulence during their flights. This number four, right here next to Spain, translates in the key to a single wave and a double wave as well. What does that mean? It means there's some moderate turbulence at 40,000 feet and there's severe turbulence down at 26,000 feet. OCNLCB means there will be the occasional thundercloud, a cumulonimbus, obviously something to steer clear of because they cause turbulence. And this black line is what they refer to as a jet stream and we'll soon see what that means. In this video, as I'm sure you've understood, we're going to talk about turbulence. But what actually is turbulence exactly? We reached out to some experienced commercial airline pilots who kindly broke it down for us and explained how they, as seasoned pilots, handle turbulence during the various flight phases. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. And clarify something first, shall we? The plane starts to shake vigorously when it encounters a patch of turbulent air. But what exactly do we mean by turbulent air? We mean air that doesn't flow in a straight line anymore, but in a chaotic and random way. Think about, for instance, what happens when you light up a cigarette. The smoke rises at first, going straight up before it is dispersed in a swirling, disorganized and indeed turbulent way. So, although we sometimes refer to turbulence as hitting an air pocket, it's not actually a pocket of air. There's always air around us, but it can become turbulent for all sorts of reasons. Basically, turbulence can be split into two categories, high altitude and low altitude turbulence. Let's start with the low altitude kind. During takeoff and landing, you might encounter what's called mechanical turbulence. I'll show you a real world example right now. Here we go, the plane is approaching Punta Raisi Airport in Palermo. The pilot already knows there's a strong wind blowing from the south, so he's expecting a bit of turbulence. Why is that? Because just south of the airport stands Mount Pecoraro, which is an obstacle to the wind. So the mountain essentially deviates the wind. It deviates the air, which then blows back down in the area of the airport, creating vortices. In this particular case, it's absolutely crucial for pilots to not only have a detailed wind map readily at hand, but also to thoroughly know the layout of the airport and the topography of the mountainous terrain of the area. In extreme cases, they don't even try to land, but change course and head for what's called an alternate airport, meaning an alternative destination if the intended airport is a no-go due to bad weather or whatever else. During takeoff and landing, there can also be what's called wind shear, which is essentially a sudden change in the wind speed and direction. The wind gusts can be treacherous. Imagine making a landing against the wind. A plane coming in for landing at the airport travels at about 120 knots, which is roughly 220 kilometers per hour, but gusts of wind that can reach speeds of more than 20 to 30 knots and which blow in all directions mean that the wing might not have enough air beneath it to keep the plane in the sky. So what do the pilots do? They follow the so-called memory items, meaning they've got a bunch of ready-to-go procedures and commands to give to the aircraft. As a last resort, with wind shear during landing, pilots can execute a so-called go-around maneuver, which essentially means they crank the engines back up and abort the landing. At this point, let's go and see what happens at high altitude. Let's head upwards. At high altitudes, pilots get ready with a map similar to this one. It's called conducting reconnaissance. It's really interesting. There's a whole lot to talk about. The green lines show where the bad weather areas are, while the black ones show where there's a jet stream which can cause turbulence. But what is a jet stream? Essentially, we're talking about air currents, which are like rivers of air that actually flow all around the globe from west to east, zigzagging along at speeds of between 80 and 450 kilometers per hour. That's why, if you're flying in the same direction as the jet stream, you can use it to your advantage and go faster. 
Here, for instance, the chart identifies some light turbulence between 24,000 and 14,000 feet, which goes by the name of CAT, clear air turbulence, turbulence where clear skies prevail. This little symbol here, on the other hand, indicates that there's a chance of icing, so ice forming on the plane's surface. And these numbers, 450, 400, what are they? They indicate the height above which cumulonimbus clouds will not be found, meaning those storm clouds that can cause atmospheric instability. So, when a pilot sees that there's turbulence, what do they do? Obviously, it depends. It depends on a bunch of things. But in some cases, a different route is set even before takeoff. Or they might make the decision to lower the flight altitude, meaning they will fly lower in response to the conditions. These choices are particularly costly in economic terms because, for instance, flying lower where the air density is higher means you're going to burn through more fuel. But I haven't even mentioned the most insidious turbulence for pilots yet. And honestly, I truly did not see this one coming. It's wake turbulence, the one caused by other airplanes flying nearby. It's incredible, but get this. You can even feel the effect of turbulence created by a plane flying a thousand feet above you. And indeed, the danger comes from the fact that the turbulence can hit seemingly out of the blue. Essentially, the pilot can't do much except activate the fasten seatbelt sign, which is why you should always keep your seatbelt securely buckled throughout the flight. Question, so in short, should we be afraid of turbulence? Is it dangerous? There are extreme conditions with severe bad weather and strong winds, which should simply be avoided at all costs because they really make the aircraft difficult to control. But luckily, before taking off, pilots have all the tools and skills they need to identify these situations and steer clear of them. A really interesting and important consideration is that an airplane's wings have to pass rigorous and comprehensive flexibility tests in which they are subjected to stresses way tougher than those produced by turbulence. Has turbulence ever caused any fatalities? Well, on American Airline flights from 1980 to 2008, turbulence caused three deaths and two of these were the result of people not wearing their seat belts. So it's best to keep them fastened for the whole flight. All right, my dear friends, I really want to give a huge shout out to Diego Carrara and Marco Rapolla, professional pilots without whom we seriously couldn't have pulled off this video. Catch you next time right here on Geopop, Everyday Science. Bye.